Welcome to a Blender tutorial. In this video, I will show you how to use multiple texture nodes to create abstract shading effects like this. Let's get started. At first, I create a plane with many subdivisions because we want to use a displacement at the end, which will need a lot of geometry. Open the shader editor and add a noise texture and connect a mapping and a texture coordinate node in front of it to be able to control the noise. Add a color ramp after the noise texture to make the gradient a bit harder. The gray values represent the values of the noise. Black is 0 and white is 1. Now we create another texture node, a wave texture node for example. Plug the color output of the color ramp in the vector plug of the wave texture. Now the following happens. Every value on the noise texture acts as a vector of the wave texture. So, for example, a 0.5 gray value from the noise texture is now a 0.500 vector on the wave texture. And a 0.8 gray value from the noise texture is now a 0.800 vector on the wave texture. You see that every value is at the bottom of the wave texture, because we only have one value as a vector input, which is then the x value. This means that on our noise texture, a gradient from black to white just reads the bottommost line on the wave texture. Just think of it like this. Black on the noise texture is at the bottom left corner on the wave texture and white on the noise texture is at the bottom right corner on the wave texture. And any gray values are points between them. This means if we have a wave texture with vertical lines, we get some alternating black and white patterns along the noise gradients. So, after we set up the second texture node, we can slide the face offset to move the vertical lines of the wave texture. When we do this, we also move the waves on the texture distorted by the noise gradients. And with this way, we can animate a looped shifting motion of the waves. Just keyframe the face offset with 0 at the first frame and with 6.275 at the frame after the last. That is about the value where the face offset is looped. Then open the graph editor and change the interpolation type of the animation to linear with the hotkey T on the graph. Now we have a distorted wavy pattern which is seamlessly looped. Add a color ramp after the wave texture to get control over the gradient. Then plug this color ramp with a displacement node in the displacement output. Plug the color in the height slot. You may have to enable displacement in the material properties under Settings, Surface, Displacement. And it is only visible in the rendered view of cycles. In general, displacement is only visible in cycles. When we use displacement, the vertices get lifted along their normals, which is just upwards in this case. Reduce the mid-level to zero, that the black areas don't get displaced at all. You can reduce the scale a bit to decrease the displacement. We are basically finished now. You can plug some color ramps between the wave texture and the roughness or base color of a principal BSDF to do some shading based on the waveforms. If the edges have shading artifacts, use a subdivision surface modifier to smooth the vertices out. Then you are finished. You got some wavily displaced walls. Have fun shading and see you soon.